Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the multiplication law of exponents. So if you watched the previous video, then you would have had your introduction to exponents where we looked at base and the exponent, the power. We looked at writing numbers in standard form, exponential form and factor form. Well, there's a couple of rules, laws that we can learn with exponents when we're multiplying, dividing and raising to a power, etc. So we're going to take things slow, we're going to look at the multiplication law today, and so let's get started. So if you downloaded your worksheet, you'll be able to write some notes, take some notes and write about the vocabulary, etc., and then answer the questions later on. So first of all, when we're dealing with multiplying numbers with exponents, we have to be very careful that we only apply these laws to numbers that have the same base. So let me explain. If we've got a number like 2 squared and we're multiplying it by 3 squared, then in this case we cannot use this law that we're learning today. We can't do it because the 2 is different to the 3 and there isn't an easy way to write 3 as 2 to the power of anything. It, it just can't be reconciled very easily. So in this case we can't use what we're about to learn. But if we have a case where we have 2 to some power and we're multiplying by 2 to um, another power, it could be the same power, it could be 2 squared times 2 squared, but in this case there's a very quick rule that we can do which is to add the exponents. So I'm going to jump straight to the answer which is 2 to the 2 plus 3 which equals 2 to the fifth power. So our answer to 2 squared times 2 cubed is 2 to the fifth power. That's if, our, if the question asked you to write it in exponential form, you would write it like this. So let's go into the reason why we add the exponents when we're actually multiplying these numbers. Okay, so in this case we've got 2 times 2, which is our 2 squared, and we're timesing this by 2 times 2 times 2, so our 2 to the third power. So right here we can see that we've got 2 times itself 5 times, and so that's why we have the 2 to the fifth power. And so all we're doing is adding these exponents 2 to the second plus 2 to the third, sorry, 2 to the second times 2 to the third gives us 2 to the fifth power. So let's try it again, but this time let's use um, some numbers that are a little longer, a little more complicated. So let's do, um, you know what, let's do 2 squared times 2 to the fifth times 2 times 2 to the third. So if we were to write this whole thing out, then our work would be pretty long. We've got 2 times 2, which is 2 squared. We're timesing it by 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 which this whole thing right here is our 2 to the fifth, then we've got to multiply this by a single 2 on its own, so that 2 is actually 2 to the first power, and then right at the very end we've got to multiply that by 2 times 2 times 2, which is our 2 to the third. So if we go through this whole thing, we've got 2 times 2, so that's 2 twos, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this equals 2 to the 11th power. Now, if the question asked us to write this in factor form, we would have to leave our answer just like this. This is factor form. Standard form would be actually getting the result of this. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, and keep going until we get our final number. If we're asked to write the number in exponential form, then this is what we want, 2 to the 11th power. So... Before we had a quick way of doing it, even before we did the factor form, which is just to add the exponents. So in this case, it would be 2 to the 2 plus 5 plus 1 plus 3. And so 2 plus 5 is 7, plus 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So we get 2 to the 11th power. So it's much quicker just to recognize that we can use the law of exponents, uh, the multiplication law of exponents, because we have the same base. Everything here is a 2. That's what we needed to use this, this law. And then just recognizing that all we have to do is add the exponents and that jumps us to our answer. So if we ever had something that looked like 
this, this is one other good one to remember, four times two, I don't know, to a third power. In this case, we've got different we've got different bases. This is four, and really that's four to the to the invisible one, four to the first power times two to the third power. But there is a little trick here. Unlike the three over here, this four can be written with two as its base. Four is really the same as two squared. So if we recognize this, that four can be written as two squared, we can now times it by two to the third, which was the rest of the problem. And now we can use this law of exponents, the multiplication law. So now all we need to do is do two to the two plus three. So our answer is two to the fifth power. And so we could actually just go right back up here and write that our answer is two to the fifth. This is the same as this. Okay, so some vocabulary that we learned last time and that we need to remember. Exponent is the number that's floating above the base. Exponent can also be can also be called a power. Um, a variable, sometimes we have a variable as a base or as an exponent, so that's the mystery number. Um, the multiplication law is what we're learning today. And exponential form, standard form, and factor form are the three ways to write our answers. So it's very important that we remember this too. Okay, so real world. So, you know, I don't know all of the ways that exponents can be used, but I know that is a heck of a lot, and I know a few good examples as well. So one thing that I always think about in math is that sometimes it's not obvious what we can use this stuff for. And so in those cases, just like you would exercise your muscles, we need to firstly think that math and logic and some of these problems are just brain exercises. So it's not as though if we can't see a point to use um, certain things in math that we just give up on them. We really need to see them as brain exercises. However, laws of exponents can definitely be used in, in many ways in, in the real world. So we mentioned previously in our last video about scientific notation as ways to write very big or very small numbers. Well, laws of exponents come in when we're dealing with formulas when we're dealing with evaluating expressions and so one way to link formulas and expressions to the real world is when we're trying to figure out complicated problems so for example um, formulas are used to convert currency so if you're going on a trip on a vacation there could be some formula that's used to um, convert dollars into euros also you can use formulas and conversions from te for temperature so Fahrenheit to Celsius and so on and formulas can also be used and are used very complicated formulas to work out life expect expectancy. So there's some pretty good formulas that are being used by big insurance companies to figure out how likely you are to to pass away by a certain age and then they can charge you a, a, a life insurance fee um, so that they still make money and so that if you were to pass away your family would would get some money as well but these companies are very smart they know how many people are are signing up with them they know the life expectancy of each person they know how much money they'd have to pay out in each case and, and so on so I would definitely say like insurance is one big um, industry that uses a lot of formulas also I, I was watching a video on YouTube earlier um, from Chevron and they were looking at the use of of formulas for oil extraction and so they were looking at data that was collected from all these sensors that they put over a, a field that bring back data that look at the likelihood of there being X number of barrels of oil underneath the ground and so exponents are a big part of these formulas just in exactly the same way that the, the four main operations are such as multiply, divide, add, and subtract. Well, our exponents are a huge part of math as well, and so we can't just think that these are just, you know, something we've got to learn this week. As we go on in our math careers, we're going to use exponents a heck of a lot more as well. So we must definitely learn this stuff, remember it, and uh, feel comfortable using it as well. Okay, so. Next, let's take a look at some examples of 
doing this. So we already did very quickly look at some examples, but let me put some examples on the screen and then we'll go through them. Okay, so the first example that we've got here is two to the third times two to the fourth. So it really is as simple as writing two to the three plus four, which equals two to the seventh power. That's it, that's our answer. If we're asked to write it in an exponential form, we could go through the whole procedure of writing, well, two to the third is two times two times two. So that's this piece right here. And we could also say, well, two to the fourth is two times two times two times two. So this all equals to two to the seventh power. So when we add the two to the third power, the th when we add the three to the, the four, because we've got two to the fourth, we get two to the seventh power. Okay, but we don't really need to show all this work as well if we remember the rule. Now the, the multiplication law again only counts if we have the same base. So over here we do, we've got three to the four times three to the second. So we just add those exponents, that's three to the sixth power. Now remember when multiplying the numbers, however, we're actually adding the exponents. So that's one thing that a lot of people get confused with and they'll end up writing that this is three to the eighth power, which is wrong, this is not correct. We've got to add the exponents when we're multiplying the numbers. Okay, finally, in this last one, we've got two to the third times three to the second. So immediately we have to stop and pause because these exponents, these bases right here do not have, have uh, they, they are not the same. So we can't use this law in this case. So in, for the answer here, we would just write, you know, the answer is two to the third times three to the second. That's how we can write it in its simplest form, in exponential form. If we're as for standard form, we would actually do two times two times two, which is eight. And then we would multiply this by three squared, which is nine. So that would give us an answer of 72. If we were asked for this in standard form, if we were asked for it in exponential form, then we would have to leave it as is, just like this. Okay, good work so far. Okie dokie. All right, so now let's go through some Q and A. So I'm about to put some questions up and then you should pause it and try and tackle these questions yourselves and then we'll come back with the answers. So here are the questions. Okay, so don't forget, you should, at this point, you should be pressing pause and then getting ready to answer these on the worksheet that you could download at mathfolio.com slash vidsheet. So press the pause button now and then try and tackle these questions. Okay, so now that you're back, let's go through the answers to some of these questions right here, to all of them. So in the first case, we can just add them. So add the exponents, we've got the same base, two and two. So we've got two to the fifth power plus two. So two to the five plus two, which gives us two to the seventh power. That's our answer for the first one. Okay, the second one, again, we've got the same base here. So that's five to the two plus six, that gives us five to the eighth power, nice and easy so far. Okay, let's take a look at this last one here. Well, we've got different bases. So in this case, we either kind of give up and write it as four times by two to the fourth, which we could do, that is that is a correct answer. However, I'm also seeing that this four can be written with the same base as the two, the four is also two to the second power. So we didn't change this number. We we have the same number, we just wrote it in exponential form. So we've got four, which is two squared, times by two to the fourth. So now we have the same base. We're multiplying these same bases with and that ha each have exponents. And so we just add those exponents. So this is two to the two plus four, which equals two to the sixth power. And so four times two to the four is two to the six. Okay, good job so far. All right, so now let's, it's your turn. So I'm gonna put some questions up for your turn. We're not gonna go through these answers. These are questions that you should answer on your worksheet and submit them to your teacher for either homework or extra credit or makeup work as well. So here are the first six questions. Okay, so you should pause at this point and you should write down the questions on your worksheet and then try and answer them. And then press play again and we'll go through the final monster question. 
Okay, so hopefully you tackled those and you feel confident with the your turn questions. So next we've got the monster question. So here it is. Okay, one little hint that I'll give you at this point is to, well, two hints really. We've got to remember that we can multiply several numbers together, two to the second times two to the third times two to the fifth. If, as long as they have the same base, we just add all of these exponents up. So that's your first hint. That's hint one. Hint number one. Hint number two is really to think about if we have the same base here, 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 and here, is there a way that we can convert the four and the eight to write it with the same base that we're already seeing in the majority of this monster question? Okay, so that's the monster question. Please fill it in on your worksheet as number seven and then submit it to your teacher. And thanks for watching as well.